welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing well. It's already two weeks into the new year, but happy, happy, happy new year. I hope this year is a great one for you all. I hope you all had a great Christmas, a great New Year's. Um, we're only like three weeks into the year, but it already feels like Christmas was such, such a long time ago. But we had a great Christmas. Um, over the Christmas period, we did so much. We visited a few grottos with the kids, went to see Santa. And then we had like a fun family Christmas shoot. I may insert some clips here. Um, yeah, we had a fun family Christmas shoot in our house. And then we had, on Christmas Day itself, we had, you know, family time at home. Kids woke up nice and early, you know, opened all their presents. There are thousands of presents. So blessed to have such a big family. Got lots and lots of presents. And then we kind of chilled, had breakfast. And then we went to my sister's house and had a big family dinner there. Not all of my family could make it. Some people were in Ghana. Some people were with their in-laws, but you know, we had a great, great time. I hope you all had a great time too. So today's video is going to be all about new year, new me. This is the time, this is the season where you tend to see a lot of videos, a lot of posts about setting goals for 2020. Um, but today I wanna to look at the other side of that, you know, and how sometimes, although goal planning and, you know, preparing for your future is a great thing to do it can also sometimes be quite a negative thing if you don't handle those plans and those goals in the right way so i'm going to be explaining a little bit more about that and about something that i've realized you know towards the end of last year and the beginning of this year that i want to do differently and that i want to share it with you guys if you're anything like me and you've been feeling the same way so let's get into it so like i just said being that we're in the month of January, this is the time, this is the season where everybody starts to, you know, plan for their year ahead and, you know, this is the best time to do it. You start and you have all the motivation to make all these plans and all these goals, which is great. You know, it might be personal plans, it might be fitness plans, it might be family plans, goals and things that you want to achieve for your business, maybe for your career, whatever it may be, things that you would love to see yourself produce and do throughout the year. This is the time that people tend to make their plans towards those goals and that is a really really good thing because obviously you know just because it's a new year doesn't mean that you know everything is going to work out for you you know something that i have to realize is that 2020 does not owe me anything it's down to me to put in the work and you know in order to reap something good and something successful i'm going to have to sow the hard work so whatever opportunities are awaiting me in 2020 I have to prepare and make sure that I'm ready to meet those opportunities which is what is going to create success. So you know failing to plan is never never a good thing you know. You could have so many opportunities coming your way but if you're not prepared for them you're going to miss out on what is there for you. So of course it's important to set goals. Me personally I know that I'm somebody that kind of needs that structure. I'm someone that needs to see what a plan looks like in order for me to be able to do it successfully. So even if it's something as small as having a to-do list daily, that really, really helps me to structure my thoughts. It helps me not to procrastinate. And, you know, sometimes when you have this big goal and you don't have the steps to do it, you know, how to get from A to B to C to D. If you don't have that in place, for me personally anyway, I tend to feel very overwhelmed by that goal and then I end up procrastinating and then I don't end up doing anything because it's not broken down into things that are realistic and manageable. So um, I'm not an expert on this and I'm sure my friend Tolly will say she's not an expert either but she's really really good at explaining how to make smart goals. She just did a video on it so little plug there. Follow her on Instagram at Tolly Frimpong. She's got a blog, she's also got a YouTube channel. So she's really, really good at sharing ideas and how to make and plan realistic and manageable goals and smart goals. So yeah, definitely check her out. So you have to know yourself well and you have to know what works for you. Also, what I've realized is that it's not just about talking about it and making your goals sound great. You know, you know, selling yourself and making all your plans and your visions and your goals sound great. It's about actually doing the work and not planning is gonna hinder you from being able to achieve your goals. So planning is always, always a good thing. But something that I've also realized about myself is that although it's good for me to have a plan in place, sometimes if I do have a plan in place and I start to compare my, my plan or my visions to other people's plans, 
I get a little bit disheartened, I start to feel like, oh, maybe my ideas are not good enough, maybe my dreams are not big enough. And, you know, especially with the culture in which we live today, you know, social media and millennials and everybody's an entrepreneur, everybody has a new idea every day. And that's a great thing, not throwing shade at anybody. But if you compare yourself to those people constantly and your dreams and your plans to other people's, you can oftentimes feel like yours are not good enough and then you get discouraged and then you know you end up doing nothing that's something that i find myself doing a lot of last year you know last year was a great year for me but i was off work for a long period of time and you know in that time i was just kind of figuring things out i wasn't quite sure exactly what i wanted to do i had so many ideas but i wasn't sure how to execute them and then towards the end of the year i started to feel like well what did i achieve in 2019 like there's not much for me to list i just started to feel like what have i achieved this year and that's a really really bad attitude to have because although i may not have achieved everything i wanted to there was so much that god did for me last year that now i'm just like wow and that is why i feel like goal setting is really important however if i don't look at my goals in the right way with the right perspective goal planning and goal setting can actually be a bad thing for me so just to elaborate more the reason why i say goal planning can be a negative thing sometimes is because you start focusing so much on what you want to achieve that you don't realize what you have achieved you know you start focusing so much on what you want to happen that you haven't realized what has happened you know you focus so much on what you want god to do for you that you don't stop and realize what he has done for you we're in a day and age where it's kind of culture to convince people that you're winning to convince people that you have everything going on and i just found myself in this place last year where it was like I felt very stagnant, I felt like I didn't know what was the next move, I didn't know what I wanted to do, I had all these ideas but I just felt a little bit lost and I felt like I'm not sure exactly what I want the end of year to look like for me, I'm not sure what success will look like and even if I am sure, I don't know how to get there. So it was kind of like this season of I don't know, this season of not being sure exactly what success looked like to me. I'm somebody that, you know, I like to be proactive, I like to have things in place. I'm somebody that really thrives off of being productive and I feel really good about myself when I can pat myself on the back and say, well done, you set your mind to do this and you did it. And so it was a really, really hard time for me. I realise now looking back that that kept me in a very stagnant place and it, you know, it kind of stumped my creativeness because I was so focused on, oh my gosh, I don't know what to do, that those ideas, I wasn't allowing those ideas to flow and I just kept thinking about what's next, what's next, what's next, what does success look like? If you're only focused on what, it, what does success look like, what I need to do and what I want to achieve, you oftentimes start doing things for people's approval and not necessarily because that is what you're meant to be doing it's not necessarily because that's your purpose or you're finding fulfillment in it you're just doing it so that you can keep up with the joneses and you can you know look like you're busy and look like you're you're up to something and so i've got a little revelation about that and this is what i found goal planning is not the be all and end all you don't always have to have it figured out and know exactly what your next move is it's okay not to know your next step it's okay not to know everything and not have everything figured out because even if you do have everything figured out you don't have control over what happens next you don't have control over what opportunities are coming your way you know take yourself for example sometimes there's things in your life that you're doing where all the ingredients are there for you to have success you know everything is falling into place you have the right people around you you've got a great idea you're running with it you know how to fulfill it but for some reason it's just not happening and that is not necessarily because you're not putting in the work that might just be because it's not what you're supposed to be doing and you're just so busy focusing on this success and achieving this dream that you're missing the purpose of what God is trying to teach you and you forget what it is that you actually want out of this thing that you're trying to achieve and sometimes it is the right thing it is maybe something that God wants you to do but you're so focused on what I need to do what I need to do that you're just running in your own strength and you're getting drained and you're not allowing room for God to actually move and I'm going to be referring to God a lot throughout this video because although I know not everybody is a believer I am and so that is how I naturally think so I hope you're not bothered by it but yeah there's so many reasons why 
sometimes God keeps you in a certain season, that season of, I don't know, that, ste that season that just feels like you're stagnant. Maybe it's because, you know, he wants, to, he wants you to learn certain things in that season to prepare you for your next season, to prepare you for your next blessing. But because you're not learning it, you're just stuck in this place and he's waiting for you to realise. He's waiting for you to let go of certain habits and he's waiting for you to let go of certain people, certain people that you cannot go forward with. You cannot progress into this next level with that person with you. And you're not realising that. You're just so focused on what I need to do, what I plan to do, what I said I'm going to do by March, what I said I'm going to do by July, what I said I'm going to do by August, that you're missing all of these nuggets that God is trying to drop on you to prepare you for your next season. And, you know, of course it's a good thing to have a plan and God doesn't just want you to be idle and just sit there and say, oh, I'm trusting God so you don't do anything. No, God wants us to be people that are prosperous. God wants us to be people that make moves and do things However, if that's all you do, you don't leave any space for God, you know. There is favour in being vulnerable with God, you know. When you can just come to God and say, do you know what God, I don't know what I'm doing, I need your help. That is where you're giving him that room to move and to help you and to guide you and to show you what steps you need to make. So of course, you know, it makes sense to think about your tomorrow and not just live for today. You know, you have to prepare for your future. But there's also things that you're supposed to pick up and enjoy in the current season that you're in. There might be this goal that you're chasing. I don't know, you might want to be the CEO of a company. You might want to make a certain amount by this time of the year. But how about the fact that once upon a time, you were praying for a husband, you were praying for a wife, you were praying for a certain job, you were praying to be able to have children, and God has done all of those things for you, but you're so busy focusing on becoming that CEO that you're not realizing that, you know what, my prayer has actually changed. Your prayers now become, oh God, you know, give me the opportunities, give me the skills, help me to nurture those skills to become a successful businesswoman or successful businessman that I wanna be. But because that's your only focus, you've completely not realized and forgotten where God has brought you from. And that is something that I was so, so convicted about because it's different for everybody, you know, but me personally, I know that there's, no matter how successful I am in this life, if I wasn't able to have children and I wasn't married and I didn't have this amazing family unit that I have, that I would not be content in life. It doesn't matter the amount of money that I have. If I didn't have these things, I would not ever feel fulfilled. And that really made me stop and realise and just be grateful what God has given me. The things that, you know, once upon a time, me personally, as you will know, if you've followed my journey, I struggled with infertility and I struggled with, you know, bearing children and con conceiving and carrying pregnancies. And I'm just like, that is no longer a struggle for me. That is no longer something that I have to contend for. And that's because God has brought me from that place and brought me to this place. And at that time, I couldn't even imagine having been in my third pregnancy, you know. The talk at that time between me and Morgan is, are we ever going to be able to have children? And now it's, well, how many are we going to stop at? And it's just so crazy to me that, you know, once upon a time, the thing that I was praying for, God has completely turned it around for me. And now it's just like, it's not that I haven't been grateful because because of what I've been through, I know that every pregnancy is a blessing, but it's just, Sometimes you can dismiss how big of a deal it is and how much God has actually answered and honoured your requests and your prayers and the desires of your heart because you're so focused on, I want to achieve this and that. But there are some CEOs out there, there are some you know, people that you would call successful in business or you know, in their career and they are longing for what you have. They are longing to have a, a husband that is committed and that loves them. They're longing to have a family unit and they can't get it. You know, they're so successful in what you think is goals, but they can't achieve what it is that you've achieved. And you know, that is just human nature for you. We always want what someone else has got, but I really had to stop and pause and just think about all that God has blessed me with and I know that if I am never ever successful at another thing in life being a mum and being a wife is the biggest achievement to me because that is my heart's desire I know that I have so much contentment you know in being a wife and being a mum and of course you know that is not all there is to me I do have you know big dreams big goals for my family but at least I have a family to plan around and you know to plan with so yeah, I just really had to stop and just appreciate and be grateful 
for this season and you know I'm not saying that as women that is all we're limited to and that's the only thing that we should be aspiring to but I think if you have achieved those things that is great and anything else that comes onto that is a bonus. So three little things that I think um, will help you if you want to find that balance that I'm going to try and do differently this year is to of course number one set goals to keep you on track to keep you focused make plans and put things in place to achieve the goals that you want to achieve but also alongside that maybe start a gratitude journal and you know write down three things every single day or every single week that you're grateful for that you realize that God did for you that you realize that you have to be thankful about you know and that will help you to stay focused on your goals but also help you to remember to stay grateful and to stay thankful for all you have achieved and all the great things that you are doing so yeah in summary I would just say it's so so important to have people around you that inspire you and motivate you however allow their dreams and their plans to do only that to inspire you and motivate you but to never to sway you off what is what you're supposed to be doing you know you have to stay focused on your journey and your goals and realize that what is for you is for you and what is for them is for them goal planning is a great thing and it's important to set goals but don't allow those goals to run you you know you have to run the goals so don't let that become your be all and end all your only focus your only priority in life because there's so much more important things so for me I think it's all about balance this year you know I want to have a successful year but a successful year for me will be you know putting in the work planning and preparing for the opportunities that God has for me in 2020 but also knowing that I don't have to have everything figured out and I can never fully know exactly everything that he has for me and that's there's a joy in that there's an excitement in that there's an expectation in that I don't be so focused on goal planning and achieving this dream and achieving that that you know you're missing time with the people that you're supposed to be doing it for in the first place you know so this year let's try not to complicate that which is very simple and that is that life is not all about success life is to be enjoyed as well and and enjoyment doesn't only come from success and money and material things you know so i hope this year is a great year for you all i hope that whatever you know you plan to achieve that you do achieve it by the end of the year but i do also hope that you're giving yourself props along the way that you're not beating yourself up and you, that you are grateful and thankful for everything that you do have and everything that you have achieved so far so i hope this video helped you i hope you got something from it stay tuned i have so many more videos coming for you this year and i will see you in my next video bye guys